Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing diabetes mellitus and anti-diabetic drugs. Okay, right. So we're currently in the process of discussing the acute complications that can occur when you are suffering from diabetes. Okay, so we've just discussed diabetic ketoacidosis, which is something that mainly happens to people with type 1 diabetes mellitus. However, it can occur in other forms of diabetes, such as type 2 diabetes mellitus. Okay, it, remember, results not because of hyperglycemia, but because of hyper insulinemia okay so if insulin signaling to the adipocytes goes down too low then the adipocytes start releasing too many free fatty acids into the blood and the liver starts producing far too many ketone bodies from those free fatty acids and these ketone bodies uh, the two main ones acetoacetic acid and beta hydroxybutyric acid those are acidic molecules and will donate protons away into the uh, blood um, when they are put into the blood okay and that will uh, raise uh, the proton concentration in the blood and therefore lower the pH making it more acidic okay and this can be extremely dangerous it generally only occurs in type 1 diabetes mellitus because in type 1 you do really have far too little insulin and that is the sort of lack of insulin signaling that you need in order to get the adipocytes to release enough free fatty acids that you get enough ketone bodies produced to actually produce uh, ketoacidosis. In type 2 diabetes mellitus, remember, there is insulin resistance rather than an absolute deficiency in insulin, okay? So yes, the insulin signaling to the adipocytes will be reduced because of the insulin resistance, but it won't be reduced as much as it is in type 1 diabetes mellitus. So you're not going to get as many ketone bodies produced, and therefore um, you are um, less likely to develop diabetic ketoacidosis. Okay, right. So now let's go on to another acute complication then of diabetes mellitus. Okay, so the next one I want to talk about is hyperosmolar, hyperglycemic state. Okay, hyperosmolar, hyper glycemic state, which for short is uh, usually abbreviated down to HHS. H for hyperosmolar, H for hyperglycemic, and then S for state. Okay, so let me describe what happens in HHS. Okay, now this is truly a result of the hyperglycemia, so this can occur in any form of diabetes. Okay, right. So, because of the hyperglycemia that is chronic, okay, the fasting state hyperglycemia, we have discussed that you're going to have polyuria, okay? So your kidneys are going to start um, excreting the glucose from the body, and when the glucose is removed in the urine, that's going to uh, take water with it, and therefore you're going to uh, produce more urine than is healthy, okay? Now, what does the polyuria lead to? It leads to blood volume uh, depletion, or body fluid volume depletion. Okay, body fluid volume depletion. Now what's the result of body fluid volume depletion? Well usually in a healthy person it makes you very very thirsty and therefore you drink uh, more water to bring back up your body fluid volume. However, in people who are um, elderly or in people who have had strokes, sometimes it's the case that these people aren't uh, capable of actually getting themselves a drink of water on their own and then if they don't receive the care that they need what can happen is their body fluid volume just goes down and down and down as they turn all of their body fluid into urine effectively which has the glucose in okay so HHS is something that generally afflicts elderly people with diabetes and generally people who have had a stroke and are in need of uh, care to provide them with uh, water. Okay, so elderly stroke victims. Okay, uh, so if you um, are elderly and have been a stroke victim, then it may be the case that you are not capable of getting yourself a 
drink of water on your own, okay? And then if you don't receive the care that you need, what will happen is your body fluid volume will go down and down and down. Now, what does body fluid volume going down and down and down cause? What well, causes the blood to become very concentrated, okay? That's why this is called hyperosmolar, because the other things that are in the blood are now going to be in a smaller volume, okay? And therefore, you're going to get hyperosmolarity. Okay. In addition, you've now got a smaller body fluid volume and your liver is still chucking this large amount of glucose into the blood. Okay. Now it's chucking that large amount of glucose into a smaller volume. Okay. So the rise in concentration that that's going to cause is now going to be even greater. So the hyperglycemia gets even worse because now the liver is chucking that excessive amount of glucose into a smaller volume. Okay. So hyperglycemia goes out of control as well. In fact, hyperglycemia can reach the height of 600 to 1,200 uh, milligrams per deciliter, which is hideous, okay? So you can get really out of control blood glucose concentrations. Okay, now, when um, blood concentration of solute and particularly glucose concentrations go up to this extent, this causes major problems for the functioning of the brain, okay? So it can cause you to go into a coma as well. Okay, so the hyperosmolarity of the blood and the hyperglycemia can cause you to go into a coma, and that's the um, horrible result of HHS if it's not uh, dealt with appropriately. Okay, so this is another acute complication that can occur if you just uh, don't drink when you do need to uh, because your body fluid is being depleted by the polyuria. Okay, right. Uh, now, the cure, obviously, to hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state is to uh, give them something to drink, basically. You need to increase the body fluid volume, so water is the cure for HHS. Okay, right. So that's a second acute complication of uh, diabetes mellitus, and that can occur in any of the uh, different types of diabetes mellitus. Okay, right. Uh, so next up, is hypoglycemia. Now this generally occurs in people who are being treated with insulin, okay? So type 1 diabetics are usually treated with insulin, uh, but type 2 diabetics can also be treated with insulin. Okay, so what happens to cause hypoglycemia is that you inject yourself with too large a dose of insulin, okay? So you give too much uh, insulin artificially. Okay, now what does that then cause? Well, we know what uh, a too large insulin bolus causes. Insulin is going to make the skeletal muscle, the liver, and the adipocytes remove glucose from the blood. Okay, so what will then happen is blood glucose will plummet down if you give too much insulin. Okay, and this will therefore cause hypoglycemia. Okay, so if you give a too large dose of insulin, it can cause hypoglycemia. Now, what happens then if blood glucose concentration goes down? Well, the peripheral tissues such as the brain need the glucose. Okay, it's important to understand that other tissues, although we discussed how skeletal muscle, uh, the liver, and the adipocytes, their uptake of glucose was dependent on insulin. Other tissues, such as the brain, their uptake of glucose is not dependent on insulin. The brain will take glucose out of the blood whether insulin is there or not. Okay, so now when you've got hypoglycemia, the brain is no longer getting the delivery of glucose. Okay, and this is extremely dangerous. Okay, so um, if the brain doesn't get glucose, then obviously that's its nutrient supply, so it can potentially start dying, okay? So it can result in coma as well. So let me tell you about the symptoms then of hypoglycemia. So generally the first symptoms which emerge are dizziness and confusion, okay? And uh, then generally you also get uh, sweating, palpitations and tachycardia as well, okay, so you're starting uh, to have a sort of panic attack, basically, uh, as the sympathetic nervous system becomes uh, turned on, okay, so sweating is driven by the sympathetic nervous system, okay, and then you're going to get the heart uh, beating faster, that's tachycardia, again, driven by the sympathetic nervous system, and the heart will also be driven, um, also be driven to uh, pump 
harder okay, by the sympathetic nervous system, and that will result in you being able to feel your heartbeat. Okay, so it will result in palpitations, which means that you're capable of feeling your heartbeat. Okay, and if it's not treated quickly, uh, it can result in coma. Okay, uh, again, an extended period of lost consciousness. Okay, so what's the treatment then for hypoglycemia? Well, you need to be given glucose quickly. Okay, so all of these three different um, acute complications of diabetes, they can all result in coma, but you'll notice that what's happening to result in that is completely different in all three cases. In the first case, it's because the blood is becoming too acidic, okay, and the treatment then is insulin. Okay, in the second case, it's because the blood is becoming too high concentration of glucose and also of other solutes, and there the treatment is water. And in this final case, uh, the blood glucose concentration is falling through the floor, okay, and then the treatment is glucose. So you'll notice that if you were to give the wrong treatment in these different cases, you would end up killing the patient, okay? If you were to give glucose, for instance, in hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state, you'd end up making the hyperglycemia worse, okay? And then you'd probably kill them, okay? Uh, if you were to give insulin, the treatment for diabetic ketoacidosis, to someone in hypoglycemia, again, you'd make the situation worse and you'd probably end up killing them. So this is where knowing your physiology really does help save lives. You need to know about these three different complications of diabetes that are extremely dangerous and how they're treated in these very different ways. Okay, right. So that's enough of the acute complications. What we're now going to move on to is the chronic complications of diabetes. Okay, so these are short-term things that can happen if things go horribly wrong. Okay, so if you forget to take your insulin, if you don't drink enough, and if you inject too much insulin, these are things that can go horribly wrong, basically. Um, however, uh, the chronic complications are what occurs long-term if you have high fasting blood glucose concentration. 